My name's Mike Rowe, and this is my job. I explore the country looking for people who aren't afraid hey, to get dirty. Yeah. Put your arm in there, see what it looks like. Oh. <laughs> Hard-working men and women who earn an honest living. You can see a lot of his insides really nicely there. <laughs> God. Doing the kinds of jobs that make civilized life possible for the rest of us. Oh my God, why is it going backwards, Robert? What the yeah. hell? You hit the button, man. I didn't hit that button. <laughs> God. Now get ready. Wait for it. Wait for it. To get dirty. Oh. Coming up on Dirty Jobs. Two hair-raising adventures. Okay, I've seen enough. First, I spin yarn the old-fashioned way out of pristine, natural fibers. That's just pure crap, right? Yes, there. it is. Fortunately, we use safe, modern equipment. It'll pull you in, it'll kill you. Told you it was hairy. And later, our journey gets even hairier. Perfect. As I wax nostalgic with my old pal Dave Barsky. This one. Oh, it's beautiful. Two times the thrills. <coughs> Two times the hairballs. God. Today I've come to the Ohio Valley to work with natural fibers. I know this because the sign is here and the sign is also new. Sometimes when people hear that Dirty Jobs is coming to town, they'll, they'll put on the dog, you know? See the fresh dirt? It's obviously just been put in. I've also been provided with a hat. The picture on the hat is that of a sheep. It mirrors the picture of a sheep on the far side of the sign. You'll see that the sheep is conspicuously void of a face. On the other side of the sign, we have the state of Ohio, which has been drawn but not entirely completed. Inside of the state of Ohio, we have what at a glance appears to be salt and pepper shakers. Upon closer inspection, you'll see them to be teepees. One of them has been knocked down. I don't know what that means. I do, however, recognize a tommyhawk when I see one, or in this case, two, and there they are. In addition, I've been given a shirt with the same title on it and my name. I am now ready to begin my day. Using machines close to a century old, Ohio Valley Natural Fiber provides an invaluable service to anyone who raises furry creatures, turning fleeces from all sorts of animals into yarn and roving which can be used for a variety of knitting projects. Howdy, you're Kent. How you doing? I'm great, how are you? All but right. Before I start with everything that's around me, I want to start with your sign out front. <laughs> All right. When'd you put it in? Uh, a couple weeks ago. Really? Yeah. I know this fresh dirt. When'd you make these? Uh, last night. Okay, when'd you make these? Uh, this morning. See, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. Do you have sheep here on, yes. on the property? Yes. Do you use their wool yes. in what you do? Yes. Exclusively, or do you, you... No, 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 no. The bulk of our business just comes from people who send in their fiber from their animals. We process it and send it back to them. So you can make... You're making yarn, I suppose, right? We make roving for hand spinners, we make batting for quilters, comfort makers, felt makers, and we spin yarn, yes. And you can spin the yarn, make the batting, the quilts, whatever, out of any kind of fiber that grows on any creature with a heartbeat? Yes, pretty much. Human hair? Yes, we've done that. Have you? Yes. Really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Also on the sign, I noticed the state of Ohio was drawn. Yes. But it wasn't entirely connected. Is there significance to that? No. Okay. <laughs> and were those, were those teepees and tomahawks? No. What were they? Knitting needles and uh, spools of yarn and things like that. Because I swear they look like tomahawks. Is that right? Yeah, they do. No, I don't think we're no. quite into that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I love the hat, but, I, but I'm going to put my other one back on because it's so tight and it's leaving an indentation in my giant we head. We can't have it. So I'm going to put the skull and crossbones back on. All right. Well, what can I do to slow the process down? All right. First thing, we have to weigh. We weigh everything. We have an entry weight when it comes in. Mm -hmm. So we need to take this whole bag, put it up on the scales, and just get the entry weight. <sighs> All right. You have to let it go? I yeah, I don't want to weigh your hand. All right, I, I, it's leaning up. It's got to be. You got to get it so it'll. So it's just. Yeah. yeah. All right. There you go. All right. One thirteen. We need to take it, put it down here on the floor. Yeah, that would be the way we can right. do it. Right. I mean, I'm thinking. Right. Yeah. And the first thing that we we see that we've got is that these are whole fleeces, which means that when they came off the animal, it's still got 
the stuff from the rear end and the bellies and everything in it. <laughs> well, why would they send it to you like that? Oh, well, just... because it, traditionally that's the way it's been done. That's just pure crap, right? Yes, there. it is. So, and it looks like insulation too. Although I guess in a way it is. First, you separate the traditional poo from the traditional fleece. If you drop it on the floor and it goes clunk, throw it away. <laughs> Anytime your poo makes a sound, yeah, you know that. <laughs> see, that's the sound. <laughs> If your poo can make a noise when it hits the ground, it's time just to let it go. Poo. Yeah. Poo. Dingleberry. That's a disaster. Poo sickles. Business is good? Business is very good. Why is it? I mean, everybody else is taking it in the neck, it seems. What, what, why are you because so busy? Because this is a hobby that produces a usable product. Well, you're actually making something. Yeah. What we're going to do now is the crap pile. We put it into a single bag and it'll just be hauled away. The rest of it, we've got to break it down into five and six pound bags. That's how it's gonna be washed. Is that a gargoyle? Does it, it doesn't is. look like a sheep. Uh, Who puts sheep next to gargoyles? I mean, what kind of message are you sending here? Uh, that the sheep gotta be protected from the coyotes. That's not a coyote. I know, it's a gargoyle protecting the sheep from the coyotes. It's a mythical creature though, isn't it? Like a griffin. No, they're for real. Really? Yeah. See, I'm learning more about Ohio than I ever imagined. <laughs> These are just regular washing machines. You oh, take the fleece, turn the bag upside down, and oops. evenly put it into the washer. So I get the sense that basically every step along this process today is going to be designed to get the wool that much better. That's exactly what it does. There's another gargoyle crying out loud. What is with you and the gargoyles? <laughs> Every time I turn around, I get one of these things. I, I need protection. From what? Well, whatever oh, that's gargoyle right. can protect you from. <laughs> He's just been like, you know, I've been sitting up here for years watching wool go in and out. And I was really hoping there'd be something else for me to do. Look at this guy. He's just disappointed. That's a dejected gargoyle. There's another dejected one. Here's a squatting one. Seems as though you caught him in the middle of his gargoyle constitutional, and it's not going well. After the wash, the wet wool is air dried for six to 10 hours before the next step. This is where the bulk of the whole operation is because this is the card room. This is where the dirty, nasty part takes place. Another one of your custom tools? Absolutely. All right, good. Who's this? This is David. Mike, hey. how are you? What do you do, Dave? Well, we're getting ready to pick this, blend it together and pick it. Blend it and pick it. So what is what is in here relative to what we've seen and right, done so we're far? We're going to actually be running this order. This is going to be made into yarn. What we're going to start with right here are large cat's claw teeth. Well, that doesn't look dangerous at all. Right. This is going to be spinning at about 500 RPM. It's the last thing you ever want to do is to be anywhere near this thing. If it has a rock or something in the fiber, it'll get fired out inside of there like a bullet. Inside of there is a small room behind the picking machine. So the wool, oh, there are the teeth down there. Yeah, so it's coming straight at us like this. Correct. All right, and it's gonna fly up in the air and then somehow Dave and I are gonna do something. Yes. And start. Grab me a handful of this. A little handful of that. Just kind of, kind of get it blended together right at the beginning. The picking machine is used to prepare the fiber by breaking up the big clumps of animal fleece into smaller clumps. This particular order is a mix of merino wool and angora fiber. So you pick up everything in there and bring it back out here. Yeah, and then we got right there again for just to get a little bit better blend. Right. Take the cart and roll it back out in the front here. Already? I'll do that. That's your cue. Keep on just putting a little bit of spray on it. There you go. You want to do it? No, go ahead. Hit it. That's an anti-static spray that keeps the wool from sticking together, almost like the stuff you'd put in your dryer at home. Now, since these have already been through once, the odds of there being like a pair of scissors or a marble or a rock in here are pretty slim, right? Yeah. I just got to stick my head in there and see what this looks like at this point. Uh, All right. Go don't, for it. Don't throw any rocks in. I won't. Once the fiber's been picked and blended a second time, the clumps will be small enough for the next step. 
Yeah. Okay, I've seen enough. Very woolly. Please, please, come on. All right, silly. Coming up, the silliness ends and the incompetence begins. Look, no, 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 no. Mike, you gotta get it a little smaller. That's way too big. <laughs> Brother, I know how you feel. <laughs> and later, I uncover the naked truth about our fearless director, Dave Barsky. Dave. What was your favorite dirty job? <laughs> I, this was uh, mine. This is a good one, actually, the more I think about it. I'm enjoying this one a lot. This is a pretty good one. <laughs> My favorite things about the show is that we focus on people who really don't care about TV or don't want to be on TV. Or Ken, he's pretty, he's pretty comfortable being on TV. But Tracy here, she doesn't want to be on TV. She doesn't want to talk on the camera. She doesn't want to explain anything. And it's not because she's scared. She's, she's just humble. You're a humble person, aren't you? See, Dave's trying to fill her with confidence right now so that when we actually start shooting the scene, she doesn't throw up on me. Which has happened before, actually. All right, we're going to now make some roving for hand spinners. Roving for hand spinners. Yeah. What, what, what step, step are we on, by the way? It seems like a thousand already. Well, because you're actually doing multiple orders today, you're jumping around from all different kinds. All right, Tracy, this is her machine. She runs it. She's an expert at it. Been at it forever. Is that true? A year. <laughs> That's like forever. Yeah, I guess. Uh, is it dangerous? Yes. Very. Now that we are going to get into the whole dangerous part of the business, anything that we're around now, you have to make sure you stay out of the way of the belts, the chains, anything that rotates fast. You, the last thing you ever want to do is put your hands, arm, right. face, anything into that thing. Because mm. oh. it won't know the difference between you and a piece um, of wool. Yeah. Got it. All right, so what are we going to do? This is well, a... we dump it into the back of the machine. This six-ton contraption is called a carding machine. Built in 1917, the carding machine pushes the fiber through a series of rolls to make roving, a product that'll later be used to make yarn. So, so this is spun wool then? Yeah. And then you just kind of serpentine it, and it's got to be nice and neat. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So the idea is just to keep, a, keep it coming steady. Yeah. You're doing pretty good keeping it consistent. You enjoyed this TV thing so far? Yeah. Told you it wasn't so bad. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, you gotta get it a little smaller. That's way too big. You gotta pull it off faster. And you gotta get it a little neater in the box. Because this is gonna go to a whole this other is place? Going straight to the customer. You're packaging it right now. So you gotta get it faster and get it serpentined in there better. Faster and better. See? You told me I was doing Just good. Don't break it. Yeah, you are. Don't break it. Keep it skinny, all right. Let me watch the way you do it when nobody's watching you. So each little piece of this stuff is coming off with a roller in front of it. And when it comes all the way down on this side, it's just a, a little tiny bit of it. But this thing just rolls it, and it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And then Tracy gives a little tug, and it all works out. Why don't you give it another try? All right, I'll give it another try. And you got to watch out so it doesn't catch on the big roller here. It, meaning your hand? No, the, the yarn. So you can't get it too close to here or you get oil. Or you can't get it too close to there, it'll catch. Oh. So you got to keep it kind of centered. And you got to twist it. You got to uh, pull hold fast. On, hold on, get, get back in there. Get back in there. <laughs> Once again, what I believe to be a, a very, very simple job is, in fact, fraught with technique and difficulty. Tracy is not just pulling the wool randomly off of the drum. She's pulling it at a steady tension. Not too fat, not too skinny. She's also twisting and laying down the wool fibers in this serpentine design that makes Kent not scream at me. <laughs> All right, one more pass. If I keep it centered there, I can't keep it centered here. You're doing amazingly well. Now, you don't have to whisper the positive feedback. <laughs> Look, no, 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 no. Hold on. Go ahead. Well, you've messed this one up. <laughs> I'll fix it. <laughs> I think we've learned all we need to learn about roving. <laughs> okay, so we got Tracy, we got Joy, and we got Dave, and we got you, and we've got this whole giant thing, and what are we gonna do? We're going to make roving for high-speed spinning.
So is this roving different than the roving we made before? It's much smaller. Uh, is it more difficult? Much more. No, the one we just worked on, that was 19, what, 17? That one was 1917. And this one? 1916. Oh, huh. okay. But it's bigger and three times heavier, and I guess, I guess maybe it's somewhat dangerous? Extremely dangerous. Explain. Uh, because if anything gets caught in it, the machine will not stop. Even after you hit a kill button, it will run for 30 seconds. Killing you? Yes. <laughs> All right, so, I mean... It, it, so should I stay with you as, as we do what we do? Or what? We're going to, you and I are going to go from place to place on the whole machine and you will see what everybody does and try and help them out. Do we start by turning it on? Uh, no, we start by loading it. Okay. I'll do that. Or I'll help. What will you do? Wait. All right. What will you do? I'm just here. <laughs> Brother, I know how you feel. <laughs> you get your box car. This guy? Yes, sir. I'm just here. Yep. You like that, huh? <laughs> I do. Push it up tight against there. Oh, yeah, this is the stuff we mixed. Yep. Up. Just put it in there. Now, David, get on the other side. You're going to grab his belt, brace yourself on the motor, mm -hmm. pull it to get this whole thing started. We got... So... Dave, you bailed out of that thought, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? There's a lot of places to take the belt. Huh? <laughs> we'll be all right. All right, we'll be all right. All right. I've never felt safer. All right, Joy. All right, red lights go on. That generally means we're under some sort of attack. Pretty much. All, all right. right. Tracy's going to start the machine. You're going to help it. I'm ready. Now, do I, I go first and she hits a button? No, she, she hits hit a button. button. It'll start to squeal a little bit and you pull. Who? Whoever is <laughs> it, It's going to squeal. Don't worry. You're all right. The machine. The machine. <laughs> all right, Tracy. Pull. This carding machine is over 50 feet long. It runs on three separate motors. And once these heavy wheels start turning, they're hard to stop. Okay, it's up. Is that a little crooked on there? It'll straighten up. What's that thing doing there, up and down, up and down? Uh, it's operating a comb in the back, which is acting like a smaller picker. Ah, You've okay. already run the picker. This is going to make smaller clumps out of the big clumps that you made small clumps out of. Got it. Okay, I'm glad somebody does. <laughs> All right. Coming up. Got my hand caught in there. It just took everything down to the bone. It's double the danger, double the dumbness, and double the insults. You're not fat, you're just fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> and later. <laughs> our happy-go-lucky director, Dave Barsky, demonstrates that beauty is only skin deep. This is going to hurt. <laughs> and very painful. <laughs> All right, now, come around here, quick. All right, you got to start pulling this up. As the fiber goes through the rollers of this machine, it's flattened into a fine mesh that looks almost like a, a cobweb. Pull this, up. Pull this out of there. Pull it. Why am I doing this? You'll see. All right, hand that to Dave. Hand that whole bunch. What? You're sticking your hand down there, Dave, and a <laughs> Now you're going to bring it over the camelback lift. It's gonna come down off of here and you're gonna lay it back and forth onto this table. Like this? There you go. All right, now things are gonna happen fairly quick. You're gonna be helping this thing around, all right? All right. When I tell you then, you go over to Tracy, she'll show you how to drop it right down into the shuttle. Go. All right, go to Tracy. All right, Tracy. The bat will then go into the second part of the machine, where it'll stretch it thinner and ultimately turn it into roving. You got it going in there? What's that? Going down in the shuttle. Oh, show. it's going in there, yeah. You need to take the sprayer and spray each apron. You have to be really fast and really quick. Now, wait a minute. What, what's coming? What's going in there right now is coming out like this? Like, yes. Really, like, well, that's yarn, isn't it? No, this is roving. It has no strength. Right. Yarn wouldn't separate. Correct. Like that. So you figure it'd take 45 minutes for this whole thing to run? For this process, yeah. Oh, I think I got it. See where it's building up right there? Getting a lot of extra in there? If the fiber buildup isn't removed, it'll get stuck underneath the roller. This has to be fixed while the machine is still going. Like 
be in there and have something crash? <laughs> Not specifically, but I can certainly sympathize. Well, this strikes me as an area where a lot of things could go wrong. Well, and not only does, should it strike you that way, it does go wrong. This is the one place where I got caught, got my hand caught in there. There was some fiber that was caught and needed to be removed or it was going to ruin the roving as it came out and I got in too close. So what happened? It just took everything down to the bone on those three fingers. Now that's called the, uh, the liquor in? That, that's the liquor in. And you can see it's turning fairly fast, and it, it goes right in behind the feed rolls there. And one thing you don't ever want to do, you don't want to get your hand caught there, because what it'll wind up doing, it'll pull you in and it'll kill you. What's that What's that drum called that spins real fast? That, that's a tumbler. It takes the, the fiber off of the breast section and puts it onto the main cylinder of the car. You got to be a little careful here, because you don't want to, you want to make sure you don't ever fall into that. Why is it, that? It'll kill you. What's this thing here? Uh, this, is, this is the board that tells us how many more spin runs we have to do. At least it's not dangerous. Well, if that board was to fall over on you, it might knock you down here. Could it kill you? Yeah, it could kill you. So what's this? Uh, looks like an aluminum bar. Well, it's actually an anti-stat bar. It helps us even more with the static problem that we have. It's generating 50,000 volts. 50,000 volts? Obviously, that thing will kill you. Nah, it won't kill you. Where did you get your hand caught in this thing? Up there in the rollers. Up here. If the fiber builds up on the rollers, it'll break the belt. So I reached in to grab it off the second one. My hand was grabbed by the belt and started to go around this way. Break your wrist? Yep. I yanked it back out because there's no way to shut the machine off and sat there and finished watching the rest of the ride. Why? Did... <laughs> so was done. So there's nobody else around? No. See, that's the kind of dedication you don't see in the average workplace anymore. Is this wrist? This wrist. So I got broke here and it chipped the bone here. Broke a wrist in two places. Sat back down, finished the shift. Somebody has to. Better keep an eye on Ken. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like to leave him alone. Wool can keep your body warm in the winter and cool in the summer because it's a natural insulator. Tiny pockets of air within each wool fiber create a temperature barrier. Wool also absorbs moisture easily. Unlike cotton, it can retain body heat even when wet. Midway through the process, the carding machine needs to be shot off to deal with fibers stuck under the rollers. It really does take 30 seconds to slow down, doesn't it? At least. <clears throat> oh, God. You like the taste of the rabbit? I feel like I swallowed a sweater. <laughs> mm. See how that one group is white, not yeah, silver? I do. You need to come in from the other side. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And Ooh. reach up through the tapes and actually <laughs> peel it out of there. No, I, I have your sacred word. This machine won't spring to life? I'm positive it won't. <laughs> I'm going to fit through here. Sideways. Head first? That's the best way. This is not really a job, is it, Ken? Yes, it is. So. <laughs> right. are, you, are you seeing where any of the fiber is caught in them grooves? Um... No, not yet. Hold on a second here. Uh, grooves. This one's jammed up. Yeah, that'd be where we're having the trouble. Well, what a happy coincidence this is. So that, that little bit of stuff is causing all your problems? Yes. <clears throat> You've got 96 little grooves here, and each time one gets clogged or stuffed, you got to turn your whole machine down. Yes. When the machine is down, from this angle anyway, it sounds as though nothing's going on with the cash register. You got that right. We're not making no money. Right. So as I continue to talk and make the same point over and over, you're going slowly broke. Yeah, we've lost a lot of money today. I know that. Our motto is if the machine ain't running, we ain't making no money. How about like we won't pull the wool over your eyes? That, those would be good. Or... You're not fat, you're just fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he'd come through with something. <laughs> All right, well, it seems like a whole lot of wasted time, but, you know, I mean, 
If you're going to stick with a machine that's 90 years old, I guess you got to take your cue from it, right? That and the customer wants all of their fiber back that they can get. Yeah. All right. I thank you, Mike. You're welcome. It saved me going under. Oh, happy to help. It's unpleasant down there. Turn it on. Turn what on? Turn it on. How do I do it? Just think Just on? Pull it towards you. Oh. Twist. There you go. Holy crap, look at that go. This is the first phase in making three-ply yarn. The roving is twisted and spooled. And once that's ready, the spooled bobbins then come to the next machine. So am I right in thinking that when the bobbins are full of yarn, this is what they look like? Yes. And they, you... You have it upside down. They... Well, obviously. How do you know? It's because the brass. Okay. The machine behind us now will be it's the... It's a cone winder. The cone winder simply takes the yarn from the bobbins and spins it into a cone to be used for the next step. We take the single ply and ply them together to make two and three plies. Where does that happen? This is the twister. Once the cones are done, they go over here. This particular one is a three ply. Each individual one. Each single strand of yarn is fed through three eyelet guides, then attached to the bobbin. It's easy. Like that? No. If it's wrong, just say no. I can take it. <laughs> Don't tell me how to do it. I want to do it myself. That's what? I mean. what? <laughs> this way? No, this, but it's not. No, go that way, go down, and uh, bring it up. I don't, oh, front. oh, almost. Almost. There you go. I got it. I okay. got it. I got it. I'm fine. I'm fine. Go hit the green button. So we're making three ply yarn. Yeah. That one's getting low. You're going to have to turn it off again. What? I'm tempted to ask you why we just didn't start all with everything the same size. Man, because you can't even sit down and relax for a second. that would be any fun, and you wouldn't learn how to change them. I know I've done it a few times, but I don't feel as though any of this information is sticking with me in a way that I'm going to be able to utilize later in life. Probably not, <laughs> because this is the last time you're going to be here. You can take that to the bank, sister. <laughs> okay, once they're full, you take these off. Mm. What do you do with this? Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> After these are full... They either get skeined off. Skeined off, yeah. Which means they go back on cones, or they get sent out on cones. We're going to take these and put them over on the cone winder. The cone winder. Where are we so going? They can be... This stuff is going to get skeined off. OK. I'll do whatever, son. You're Let's all. Get it skeined off and get it out of here. He's got seniority. Yes, he does. So as much so as I'll I'd like to these. hang with you for another small eternity, this is goodbye? Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. What's happening? All we're doing is just hooking these up down here, and we're going to turn off the skein so we can ship this stuff out of here. Is this a skein? Those are skeins hanging on a skein tree. <laughs> so a skein is really just a, a, a loop, a giant loop with different numbers of strands in it. It depends on the weight of the yarn and everything. Okay. Excellent. How's the machine work? By hand. Of course. Just keep your hands out of the yarn itself. That's right. That's all you got to do. Oh, look at that thing go. Hey, man, I want to thank you seriously for having us out today. This was uh, almost fun. Hey, we appreciate you. No, it was Bye. good fun. I'm going to let you finish this All up, right, okay? I'll take over. All right, don't hurt yourself on this I'll thing. Because, you know, this machine could kill you. This machine could. I learned a lot of things today. can kill you. I learned how to get knots in yarn, two-ply, three-ply. Learned how to twist it together. Met a lot of machines that were created around the time my granddad was born. And all in all, I had a day that I'm not going to soon forget. Ken, you're not going to forget this day, are you? Never. See? Coming up, Barsky decides to bring out some of his inner beauty. Oh! And we all learn firsthand that beauty really is in the eye of the beholder. So the crew and I were filming at the Mission Point Resort when we heard about a job in the hotel salon that had the potential of being dirty. So naturally, we had to investigate. This is Susan Bentley. Susan is the proprietor of the uh, Seventh Heaven Salon and Spa here on Mackinac Island. How's it going? Not too bad. You're a professional beautician? Yes. And you are also trained in other 
arts of beauty? That's correct. Such as? Waxing. Mm. I've been curious for a long time why people want the hair on their body removed. Can you tell me why that is? Well, I think some people think that it's sexy. I see. So in this day and age, uh, the idea of a woman coming in to have all of the hair removed from her body, or a man, is very much in vogue. That's true. Uh, I will not be having the hair removed from my body, but you have a customer, I understand, who is here and willing to have this process effectuated upon him? Um, yes, I do. <laughs> Our pal Barsky making the ultimate sacrifice so we can learn about the all-important job of removing hair from a, a person. This is a good specimen. Why? Because he's hairy. I once saw him grow a beard in four hours. And since you don't see him quite as often as I do, this is what I mean. The goatee is something else, dude. This one? Yeah, the one you're wearing. What? It's fantastic. Look like a Confederate soldier. What are we going to do to him, honestly? I don't want to hurt him, but, I mean, we're not, we're not waxing his face, are we? Well, a part of his face. Which part? We're going to do the, the nose hairs. <laughs> you know how bad that hurts? Well. What else goes? And then he's got a, a little hairy chest thing going on there. Yeah. Easy. Any, any other areas we're going to work on? We'll see how he gets through this, and then we'll go from there. All right. So this is a hard wax. Mm-hmm. Put it in probably, like, about a quarter of an inch. Let their head back. Is it hot? It is a little bit hot. Like this, I'm going to squeeze it. <laughs> That's not so bad. It's a good look. Thanks. Can you give a little tap there? Sure. Do you, no, tap the wax. Oh, the wax. Little finger down there. And it was oh, yeah. Be tacky. Is it still tacky? This whole show is tacky. <laughs> I'm going to get it all in one shot. Are you telling me that you're just going to yank this whole thing yes, out? Yes, I am. <laughs> and I think you should do the next one. The important thing to do is just, you don't want to put it up too far because you need some hair to actually filter. The dust stuff, mm -hmm. right? So you just want to get the stuff that everybody can see. Right? I mean, that's why you have nose that's hair, right? The yeah, dust correct. and stuff gets filtered. Yeah. Okay, so believe it or not, this doesn't hurt. I don't believe it. He doesn't believe it? I don't feel a thing. Okay, so you want to hold the bridge of the nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, and kind of hold their, their head a little bit. So when you pull it out, sometimes they go forward. Well, sure they do. Okay, yeah, you want to grab hold of it. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, dude, you liar! So we can do an extreme close-up. Oh, my goodness! <laughs> It doesn't hurt. Stop. No, See? it did. Oh, my God. Where do you think of that? Man, I had side, no idea it? he had so much hair in his nose. Oh, okay, so. You got this. What do you got? You got this. Quarter of an inch. You're going here like yeah, that? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Oh, like this? Pull it back out down the like Pull it down. There uh -huh. you go. Now squeeze. And then just let it go, though. Let it go. Uh -huh. Just take care of that. You feel good about it? I think you can. Oh, I'm feeling... I've got no... No worry at all about my ability to yank this piece of hardened wax out of my friend's nostril. Okay, so I'm gonna hold up here and not down here. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you want to keep his head stable, and when you pull, you need to pull straight down. Straight down. Yeah. Not up and out. No, no, and not, no, no. And not real slow and either, don't right? Don't twist. Okay. Should I say something comforting to him? You can lie to him all you want. That's what I did. I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. I'm gonna be perfectly honest. This is gonna hurt like a son of a gun, and I'm gonna do it on three, one. Oh! Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is not what I signed on for. All right, so his nose is clear. Yes. This is good. We're learning things. I'm uh, horrified, yet I need to see what's next. <laughs> Coming up. Oh, oh. I helped Dave get in touch with his sensitive side. <laughs> oh, your mama's big boy. Oh. Unfortunately, Dave's sensitive side is covered with hair. <laughs> Please cover, cover. Don't, don't. People don't that need to see. Scary, People don't right? need to see this. Okay. At this point, I'd strongly suggest any women and small children and full-grown men shield their eyes. It's not going to be pretty. We have a uh, big workspace here. Yes, we do. Uh, we use the same wax? Or we don't. That's a hard wax. This All is right. a soft wax. We'll be using this muslin? This is a zinc wax. I need to get the whole area done. Get the whole Alcohol is applied to prevent nasty infections. How hot is the wax? Um, don't know. Hot enough to rip the hair off. Of should it should be bubbling like that? Boiling? It's not boiling. It's actually a little bit thin or thick right now, so I'm just going to turn it up, too. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to... Sure. So you're going to go put it on with the hair. And take it. Is it hot? No, but you're pulling my hair. Well, that's you what you're saying. Get used to that, dude. Oh, God. So you're going to put a hand here, okay, and kind of give it a little tension. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Do I breathe in or anything like that? You can do whatever you like. Oh, that was so bad. Okay, so bad. that was a nice clean one. See, wax is pretty good consistency. Great. Okay. Got it. 
Perfect. Keep it going. There you go. Let's go something like this. As I recall, there was some padding. And then I'm going to pull back this way, and I'm going to go this way. Oh, that's beautiful. Grab it again. Go on there, right on top of that. And get oh, sure. that. Try and get that. And rub it. Rub it. Rub it. Rub it. Good. Now keep going. Oh, oh my goodness. Beautiful. Look at that. This area. This is awesome. Keep no, going. no, this is happening. Dave, Dave, this is going. happening. All right, good. Okay, good. Look at that. A little bit of blood. Seriously, I'm bleeding? Just probably three follicles. It's like a little, like a little prick. <laughs> Ooh, you're just smoking now, aren't you? Already. That's got to hurt, too. Oh, that one did. Oh. 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 oh, God. This is gonna hurt. Oh. Oh. Right. As a rule, who handles pain better, men or women? Women. Not even close, is it? No. Rip it off. Oh, my God. Oh. Ooh, jeez, oh, a whiz. It looks like a hairball. <laughs> right here. Oh. Right. I want in on this. Oh! Oh! Now, are the moles supposed to come off too? That casual. Kanye West! <laughs> <laughs> oh, your mama's big boy. Oh. Uh, what was your favorite dirty job? <laughs> I, this, was, uh, this is a good one, actually, the more I think about it. I'm enjoying this one a lot. This is a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're serious. I think I'm going to change. Why, why would men do this, you know, if, if nothing else can be accomplished from what we're doing right here, surely we can address that, we can speak to that. Oh, men around the country lying here willingly, having, having hair removed, why would they do it? What happens? Never again. Never again, dude. We ought to build a memorial for it. Never again. Here, have some vodka. No, seriously, what? No, this is so cool and refreshing. Mm. Should we just vote? I want to test it for you. Here you go. Here you go. We should have done a happy face. That's like a happy face, having a stroke. <laughs> you can sit up to drink the water. You don't have to stand back. Let me have the water. That actually helps. All right. Ah! Cook a mugger. She scared me with that one. Uh, can we move on, on, please? You want to move on? Somehow, somewhere, yeah. Well, you have a lot. To you have a lot to like, do. I it's don't just... care. Really? Oh, my God. I feel like... I, I, I feel like the humane thing to do is, is to stop this, but I also feel like it's a cruel thing to do to send him home. Look, he's looking like he's got the mange. I mean, he looks yeah. like a, like a, just a well, junkyard cat that just yeah. keeps coming around. And I don't know if That's it's... That's fine. I'm fine with that. Whatever you want to do is fine. We can always clean you up tomorrow if you have a... You can just I, I'm not coming back. <laughs> okay. Gentlemen, I'll leave you with this. Taste is a subjective thing. And I admit, Dave does look kind of sleeker without all that thick, matty hair on him. But there's a price to be paid to get clean and sleek and beautiful. How much does it cost, by the way, to get all your hair pulled off? If we did most areas, I yes. think it would be about $200. About 200 bucks. Okay, so, you know, it's not just a question, though, of, of the money. You got to have it in you. You got to have, you got to have the pain thing down. You did good. Really? No, not really. It was embarrassing. Let's get out of here. Hey, hey, hold on. Help me up. This is a Lamprey. As you can see, it's hideous to behold, mouth full of teeth and genuinely a, just a cranky creature. I'm going to go ahead and stick it on Dave's arm now, and I'm going to do it because you have not gone to discovery.com forward slash dirty jobs to suggest our next dirty adventure. So I'm going to go ahead and let him suck the life out of Dave while you get your priorities straight. Discovery.com forward slash dirty jobs. No, no, no. They, they like me, man. Ow. Every time I open my mouth, I pull out a freaking hairball. Regular web mesh filter. Honestly, Doug, would it be possible to have a conversation with this man without without all of this happening? Is there any any way we could do a show without this happening? Just, uh, however briefly, it would just be great. 